Damien, you described this album as uh, William Blake to William Hill almost. Yes. Uh, want to explain that? First of all, William Hill for North America. Well, this is this is this is sort of William Hill, isn't it? Pubs, pubs, betting. We'll go with it. Alcohol, English, sex. And how about the William Blake thing? And the William Blake is um. Well, old Will. What did what, you get there? What Will was good at, you see, is he brought profundity to the masses. He was a great popularizer. Oh, I'll tell you that one again. And is, so there's a definite parallel here oh, between Blur and Bill Blake. Well, one would hope so. Not magic one hours, would, but not bad. One 41. would definitely hope so. 41, I got 41. All right, my turn. Here we go. Sleep that to your gibbs or a cat door. You're glowing in a hot door. Good night, TV. You're all made up, and you're looking like me. Outside, the one to be alone. We wear the same clothes, because we feel the same. Because we try it, when we say goodnight. Oh, a lot of the album is sort of inspired and loosely based on 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 Martin Amos's book London Fields. Ah. Oh. So Keith, who was a avid, he was an avid arrow player. Avid arrow player. Portobello Road. Yep, which is where I live. So it's all part of my life. So it was more of a feeling, just sort of something. It's an ambiance. I mean, it's. Hard to recreate it in, in Toronto, but um, this is a good start. This is this is the most at home I've felt since setting foot on this fair. Continental. It's a very good way. I mean, you see, in America, people exercise their, their bodies all the time. You know, they've got they've got far, far more gyms than libraries. And it's literature that address this. It's literature that has influenced you all the way from. Well, you should. You should. You should. Exercise your body and your brain at the same time. Was it, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you were sort of coming off the, uh, a moderately successful album with. Oh, no, a spectacularly unsuccessful yeah. album, but well, a, well, you'd, you'd a, critical critical acclaim. a critically acclaimed album. Commercially mediocre. So, yeah. was the pressure on to make money here, to stay with the label, to, to actually continue as a band? I don't think we've ever sort of concerned ourselves with making money. Um, Right. <laughs> so what have you been concerned? Oh dear. Besides so throwing making, oh. making much much. Bad music. hours. Bad hours that was. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, sun sex and sangria is the idea. With a little with a little um bisexual aperitif. <laughs> and, and the who become almost an archetypical pop band. Yes, it is. And I, don't, I could never really stomach Roger. I always found Roger a bit of a, bit of a prune. But they definitely had some good tunes, those boys. And what is it about Britain on the pop side uh, that fascinates you guys? I don't think it's really... Um, I don't think it's exclusively that at all. I just... Probably the music, but the actual... Culturally, I think it, it, it starts sort of... Um, in Victorian Britain, actually, <laughs> want to be specific. It's the music hall of the of the uh, late nineteenth century that we find interesting. You know, the sort of I, th I think we're always interested in any any in any any sort of cultural point that, that marries sort of good tunes and alcohol. You got it. Good man. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. You were answering the question. Absolute <laughs> that, yeah. that was. So why do you call the uh, album Parklight? Talk to you. You don't want to talk to you. Why do you call the album Parklight? I had a thought the other day, Damon, about... Oh, I called a, it Park Life. ...about a good reason why it could be called Park Life, because it's, it could be how you feel when you're trying to park your car, and you can't. Really? Well, that's one way of looking at it. <laughs>